GMGM. What's up, everybody? My name is Josh Gordon, and I hope you had a really nice Thanksgiving holiday wherever you are. If you're in the U.S., hope you enjoyed the time off. And if you're elsewhere in the world, man, hope you had a nice, relaxing week yourself, too. Now, let's dive into some of the most important crypto and Web3 news stories of the week. It's been a slower week given the holidays, but still, some important things happen, so let's dive in. The first story of the week I want to discuss really involves Binance. Now, ever since FTX has gone down in flames, Binance has stepped up to be a market leader in a lot of aspects. So Binance announced they're making a bid on Voyager. And this is a quote I have from an article. Binance US will make another bid on Voyager now, given FTX is no longer able to follow through on that commitment. Now, I didn't know that Binance had originally bid on Voyager, the exchange when they went bankrupt, and there were rumors and concerns that would represent a national security concern for the U.S. Now, CZ, who is the CEO over at Binance, said that, I think the U.S. national security concerns were rumors spread by FTX to try and push us out of the bid. There was never any concerns about us participating in the bid. Now, this is just another shady move from FTX that comes to light in terms of spreading rumors about how another crypto market participant uh, could be viewed in a negative way. And I had always actually heard myself that Binance was a Chinese company. I'm not actually sure where that rumor originated, but I learned this week that CZ was born in Canada and is a Canadian citizen and has lived there for 30 years. And Voyager is a Canadian company themselves. So I think that as someone who has money locked up in Voyager. You know, I hope this goes through and it would be actually a great acquisition from Binance. I mean, given the given the Canadian uh, linkages, but I just want to put to rest that a Binance is not a Chinese company and there are no security concerns given this kind of acquisition to the US. Binance continued to make waves this week by upping their industry recovery fund. Now, this is a recovery fund that will be used to buy distressed crypto assets and support the industry. And CZ announced today on Friday, November 25th, that they're adding another billion dollars to this fund, bringing it to two billion total. So we should see, you know, hopefully some startups, maybe some exchanges get some relief that they need during these hard times. And this is all on top of Binance already talking about the proof of reserves and the things that the that exchanges should do to operate in a trustworthy fashion. So I just like to see a lot of positive moves coming from Binance over the last weeks. With story number two, let's talk about MetaMask. Now, IP addresses and wallet addresses, it came to light that they're being collected when using MetaMask. And this seems to have bothered a lot of people who are using the wallet. Now, while this may not be new information, Consensus, the company behind MetaMask, updated their privacy policy information, which caused people to look into this. And Consensus has come out and said that IP address data that's collected through MetaMask users will not be monetized or exploited. But this, this update comes at a really not timely moment as people are looking for self-custody solutions after the FTX fallout. Now, ultimately, the safest and most private form of custody is going to be cold storage. And if you haven't yet, I'd strongly recommend you look into getting a Ledger hardware wallet to consider storing some of your crypto assets on. And I think it's important that we bring up a interesting discussion on user data and how you can permission it to applications. Now at Unstoppable Domains, we're really thinking about Web3 identity and how you can permission your data to third-party apps, companies, and services to better control what's private. Now, you know, personally, I don't know if what MetaMask is doing is bad or not. I, I think that is probably pretty standard for most internet companies to collect some basic information around IP address and, you know, your, your wallet address. And that's already public information. But still, no one likes knowing that their information is being collected. And at Unstoppable, we're thinking about how you control who gets to see that. With story number three, let's talk about how the future is multi-chain. So this week, Magic Eaton and Polygon partnered up to be adding Polygon support to the popular NFT marketplace. Now, Magic Eaton says they're committed to onboarding more global brands to NFTs and being the best marketplace across chains. And I find this kind of interesting because Magic Eden started as a marketplace for Solana NFTs only. And then OpenSea, they started out for just Ethereum NFTs. And we've seen both slowly add support for other chains because A, you know, it helps them grow their user base and make more money. But B, the future's cross-chain. 
and limiting users to a specific chain is a bad user experience. We wouldn't be able to move between Polygon NFTs to Solana NFTs, Ethereum NFTs, and you know whatever chain you want to be inter interacting with NFTs as well. So I think this is a big move for better user experience on Magic Eden. And this is also a huge reason why Unstoppable focuses on being chain agnostic and has support for many wallets and logins and reverse resolution across chains. And we're, we'll continue to add more. So I wanted to mention that there. Also, I got to note that it seems like basically every single week on the Crypto Weekly Recap, we're talking about yet another major, major move or partnership from Polygon. So good to see their team just absolutely ripping and crushing it across Web3. All right, in Unstoppable Domains news, it's Black Friday today, but I just want to say Cyber Monday is going to be special. So Monday will be awesome. If you're looking to get a Web3 domain for yourself or friends or family, stay tuned for some announcements on Monday morning. This is the kind of NFT sale we like to see. That's all I'm going to say for now. But if you've been part of the Unstoppable fam for a while, you might know what's coming. This is a fun day for everybody at the company. We're excited to push Web3 domains to as many people as we can. And hopefully you, your family and friends can get one too. So stay tuned for Monday. And lastly, instead of doing the community member of the week in the traditional fashion I normally do, I wanted to give a special shout out and say that I'm thankful for everybody who participates in the UD fam. Your contributions to discussions online and your willingness to be a part of digital identity movement and really pushing Web3 identity forward are so appreciated. And I hope you had a nice holiday week wherever you are. So if you're in the UD fam, you're watching right now, thank you. I'm grateful for you. I just wanted to pass that on since I've been doing a lot of reflecting uh, given the Thanksgiving holiday. All right, that's it for the Crypto Weekly Recap. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. It helped you stay on top of Web3 and NFT news. My name is Josh Gordon. Please let me know what you want to hear from in future weeks if you enjoyed this recap and what you found interesting and insightful. With that, I'll see you next Friday covering crypto news. Peace out.